Welcome, everyone, to this webinar on Atlas TI-8 for Windows. My name is Ivana Radovojevic, and I am the Project Coordinator and Client Relations Manager with Atlas TI in our Europe office. So today we're going to see an introduction to Atlas TI-8 for Windows and a global overview of how we can carry out an analysis project. Now I also invite everyone to take note of our contact information, which I've put up here. So for any questions or doubts that you may ever have regarding the software, please feel free to contact us. You can send us an email by writing to clients at atlasti.com, or you can give us a call. If you don't see the telephone number for your country listed here, just take a look on our website, and you'll see the full list of phone numbers of all of our international offices. In addition to this, I've put my personal email in case anybody would like to contact me personally after seeing today's presentation. And uh, finally, I would like to share a nice piece of news with everyone here today that after to seeing today's webinar, if you do decide to purchase Atlas TI, each of you can count on a 10% discount coupon. So if you do decide to go for it, just send me an email and let me know, and I'd be more than happy to send you that discount coupon. So let's go ahead and begin by first off saying, what is Atlas TI? Well, we're talking about a computer-assisted qualitative data analysis software. In other words, this is a software that facilitates the qualitative analysis of any unstructured and semi-structured data. So Atlas TI can help us identify the themes, patterns, and meanings across all of our sources of data. And of course, we can analyze a great variety of sources of information. So we can have text documents, such as articles or interview transcriptions, uh, graphic documents and images, audio, video files, geo data, and social media data. So all of these different sources can be imported into the same Atlas TI project so that you can analyze all the emerging trends. And where does Atlas TI come from? Well, the first version was developed in the Technical University of Berlin in 1989. And indeed, our headquarters is in Berlin today, but of course we also now count on users and offices all around the world. So Atlas TI has been on the commercial market for well over 20 years now. And today we count on Atlas TI 8 for Windows as well as Atlas TI for Mac. And if you have an Android or iPad tablet, we also have a free Atlas TI app that you can download so you can also analyze your data from your tablet. Now a little bit of information on the licenses of Atlas TI. So always when you're purchasing Atlas TI, you're getting the full software all in one package. There's no uh, hidden functionalities or additional costs that come later. And you have a, we have offered different licenses to suit everyone's needs. So we have perpetual or lifetime licenses for individual and group users. Now, if you're a student, you can purchase Atlas TI at a significantly reduced cost, and you can get this for a period of six months or two years. If you're interested in getting five or more licenses at a time, you also have the option to lease the licenses or just to just pay for each year that you want to use Atlas TI. Now, in particular, what I'd like to emphasize here is our perpetual free trial version. So you can download the free trial version of Atlas TI from our website and essentially have the full software on your computer. And there's no time limits on this trial. The only limitation is in the size of the project that you can create, but it certainly offers an excellent way to begin familiarizing yourself with Atlas TI and trying it out with your own data and seeing how it suits your own research needs. Now remember, if you do decide to purchase Atlas TI for any of these license types, you can count on that 10% discount coupon. Now aside from all of this, we also offer a great variety of learning resources on our website. So if you and your group of students or researchers, colleagues, would like to learn more about Atlas TI, you can request a free on-demand group demo webinar. So you can, make, you can make this request on our website and let us know what aspects of Atlas TI you want to learn more about. And then our core team will, pre will prepare a personalized presentation according to your interests and needs. And then we can give this a one hour free virtual presentation to you and your group. In addition to this, we also offer a series of premium trainings if you want to learn Atlas TI in even more depth. And so we offer these in online formats and face-to-face -face formats. And these premium trainings really go into a lot more depth with the software, as well as uh, some aspects of qualitative methodology. And upon completing any of our premium trainings, you'll also receive an official Atlas TI certificate. 
And then, of course, you can always count on our great variety of, uh, of other learning resources, such as the full manual, the quick guide, our research blog, and in particular, our series of video tutorials. So we have a video tutorial made for each specific feature of the software, and it offers a great way to revise any part of Atlas TI. So you can, of course, find more information about all of this online. But if you ever have any other doubts or specific questions, you can always count on our free perpetual support. So just give us a call or send us an email, and we'll be more than happy to help. Now, I like to show this image because this is probably a familiar picture for anyone who's ever analyzed any text manually before. And what do we do? We go through reading the text and underlining the important bits of information. We write our notes in the margin area. Perhaps we're already drawing connections across the different ideas. And of course, this is the research process, and it's a wonderful process in and of itself. But as we can see here, this can quite quickly become quite a mess. And it can be really hard to keep track of this, or you can get lost along the way. And this is exactly where Atlas TI comes in. Atlas TI is a tool that will accompany us throughout the entire research process. So from the very beginning of setting up the project and keeping everything organized, all the way through to actually conducting the analysis, and then of course to finally generating rigorous results. So what we're going to see today is that Atlas TI is a powerful software that's easy to use and easy to learn. So you spend less time on learning how to use the software and more time actually analyzing your data. Atlas TI will help keep you close to the data so that you can reveal the meanings and relationships across all your sources of information. So in other words, this is the ideal tool for those who want to see the big picture, but at the same time, appreciate the finer details. And so with that, let's go ahead and take a look at Atlas TI-8 for Windows. So here we are in the main uh, welcome screen when you first open Atlas TI. And from here, you have the option to create a brand new project, to import an already existing project, you can import a mobile project if you've been working on your tablet and you want to continue on the computer. And you can import a legacy project. So if you've worked with an older version of Atlas TI, you can of course uh, import all of your projects to the newest generation and continue working from here. Down below and along the left-hand side, Atlas TI offers a list of all the projects that have been open on this computer. So for the purpose of today, I'm going to open a project that we already have a bit analyzed so that we can see how it looks. In this project, we're investigating the effects of having children on parents' happiness, and investigating this myth of uh, whether or not children make parents happier or less happy. Now, this is a sample project, which means that we have this project also available on our website, so you can also download it and open it in your own Atlas TI if you'd like to also explore this project yourself or have a safe space where you can experiment and learn with the software, you can find the Children and Happiness project on our website. And so here we are in the main interface of Atlas TI-8 for Windows. Along the top, we have all of the main functions organized in a series of tabs so that we can easily find anything that we're looking for. By hovering the mouse over any of the buttons, you'll always have help text appear. So you'll always be able to see what exactly each button does in Atlas TI. And also, when you're using Atlas TI, there's really no need to worry, because if you ever do make a mistake, you can undo and redo up to 100 steps of your work. Now here along the left-hand side, we have the Project Explorer panel. From here, we can directly see and access every part of our project. So for example, we have our documents. A document in Atlas TI is simply any source of information that we're going to analyze. So documents can be articles, if we want to also use Atlas TI for our literature review. It is, of course, a great tool for that as well. We can have our participant responses. In this case, we have participant responses from an open-ended survey that we conducted. We can also have image and video files. Oh. We can also have image and video files, as I was saying. I see my computer's a little bit tired today. And so we can directly see and listen to the audio or video and analyze it directly in Atlas TI. And we can have images. 
So these are just some of the examples of the different data types we can import into Atlas TI. But all of these are documents. To add any document to your project, under the Home tab, just click on Add Documents, Add Files, and then you can import the documents from your computer. So now that we have our documents added here, how can we analyze this information? I'm going to go ahead and open this article that we have here, and let's take a look. So as we begin our analysis, well, we're going to go through reading the text, and whenever you find anything that's uh, important for your research question or something that, that you want to save for your analysis, all you have to do is simply highlight that segment of the text that you want to save. And this can be as long or as short as you would like. And then right click and you have some options here. You can create a free quotation. When we click on that, we see that this has now been saved as a quotation and it's shown on the right hand margin panel by this blue vertical bar. We see the exact size and location of a quotation here. This is a free quotation because there's nothing else associated to it. We're just saving this segment of the data. Now, if we wanted to already go ahead and capture our analyses or code our data, we could also do that directly. So just highlight the quotation that we want to save, right click, and now I'm going to click on open coding. Now, what is a code? What are we talking about with coding? Well, a code is simply a word or a short phrase that's describing something we're seeing in the data. We can use codes uh, for purely descriptive purposes to explain what's happening in this quotation. Or we can use codes to synthesize an analytical point. We can create as many codes as we would like of whatever type we would like in order to best capture our analysis. Another way in which you might like to think about codes uh, is as simply tags that we're going to go associating to the different quotations. So let's take a look back at the example here. So I have this quotation selected, and I can see that it's talking about social sciences. So I'm going to add that as a code. And then I can see it's talking about the zero association between children and happiness. So again, you can associate as many codes as you would like to any quotation. You can continue adding here as many as you, as you need. And then when we click on Create, we have the quotation saved and these two codes associated. <clears throat> now, as you're analyzing, if you ever come across a phrase uh, in which you want to capture the exact words in which that is expressed, imagine you're analyzing your participant's interview data and you love the way that a participant expressed something and you want to capture that. To do this, you can use coding in vivo. What coding in vivo does is it'll create a code out of the exact text that you have selected. So all you have to do is select that segment of the text, right click again, and in vivo coding. And then Atlas TI will create a code out of that text. So we've already seen how we can create new codes and associate them to our quotations, as well as in vivo codes. But of course, as we continue analyzing, we're eventually going to want to repeat some of these codes. So if I can see that again in this quotation, it's talking about children bringing happiness. Well, I don't want to create this code again. I already have it made here. I want to associate it to this quotation as well. Well, you can certainly associate any of your already existing codes. And to do so, you simply open up your list of codes on the left-hand Explorer panel. And let's see where we have that code, children bring happiness. Here it is. And now to associate this, you just need to click, drag, and drop on top of the quotation. And now the quotation is saved and the code is associated. So you can also conduct your analysis in Atlas TI by simply dragging and dropping your codes from the left-hand side. So these are some of the ways in which we can analyze any text document. But now, Let's take a step back. And so I've just opened this article. I haven't read it fully yet. And before getting into it, I'd like to have a global idea of what this article is about. And what is this author talking about here? You can conduct a quick content analysis by creating a word cloud or word list. 
So if you click on Word Cloud, Atlas TI is going to generate a word cloud of the most frequently occurring words from this text document. Just going to put up here the English stop list, and so that way it automatically remo removes all of the articles and the common words, so the if, and, but. And so now we can see the main concept coming out from this article. You can see how many times each word occurs. And if you want to remove any of these words from the count, you can easily do so by right-clicking and adding it to the stop word list, and Atlas TI will adjust the count. Up top here, you can edit the cloud, such as changing the layout if you prefer the typewriter layout or the spiral layout. You can change the threshold, so to only see words that are occurring more than a certain number of times. And of course, you can export this cloud as an image file, and then it will be saved externally from Atlas TI, and well, you could use that to include in your final report or presentation if you would like. So let's see here. I can see that uh, Patavi is talking about happiness and children, so that's great, that's relevant to my research. But I also see the word illusion is occurring quite frequently here, and that's not something I expected. I'd like to see in what ways is the author talking about illusion. I want to go back to the article and take a look at this idea of illusion. To quickly and easily identify possibly relevant segments of text, you can also use autocoding. With autocoding, you can tell Atlas TI which word you want it to search for. Every time it finds this word, it's going to automatically select a quotation and associate this code for you. So you just tell Atlas TI which code you want associated. We can select it from the list, but in this case, I'll go ahead and create a new one. Oh no, I see I already have illusion here. So I'll go ahead and select that. And then you tell Atlas TI what size of the quotation do you want it to select. Just the word, the full sentence, the full paragraph. And then here, I'm going, I want to manually confirm all of the matches. And let's see what we get. So the autocoding has begun, and Atlas TI has found the word illusion, and has highlighted the full sentence for us. Since we're manually confirming, well, we can now read the quotation and then decide whether we want to code it or skip it. Well, I can see that this is an interesting quotation, and I certainly do want to code it. And then Atlas TI takes us right to the next one. Now I can see it found the word in a reference. And so in this case, well, I'm not interested in coding that, so I'm going to skip it. But here we are again, back to the text. And so you can use autocoding to quickly and easily filter through any amount of textual data that you may have, and then identify these relevant segments of information. If you deselect the option of confirm matches and click on code it, Atlas TI will go ahead and automatically code all of the occurrences of this word. And then we could go back and revise this. And if we never need to adjust the size of the quotation or add any more codes, and now we can easily do that. So that's auto coding. And that's a, a great help, especially in the beginnings of the, of the research project, to identify these different segments throughout any amount of textual data. Now let's take a look at how we can analyze a video document. So I have here my video imported, and uh, we see here the interface for videos. And if you're working with audio files, just remember you're going to have the exact same interface and same practice, the only difference being that you won't have an image playing here in the middle. So we can now watch the video and we can change the volume or playback rate if we would like. And so how do we analyze this video? Well, once again, we're going to create quotations and associate codes. So how do we indicate a quotation in a video? How do we select a segment of this video? Well, you just have to go to the right-hand side here on the timeline where you have the video, and then click drag and drop and you can just save your quotation by clicking on the quotation button here. And now Atlas TI has saved it, we see it here, and we can easily revise this video quotation by pressing the play button, and Atlas TI will play only this segment of the video. And remember, you can always resize the quotation so you can adjust it to make sure you're capturing what you want to capture. And now, to associate any codes here, well, we can right-click, 
and use the coding options we saw before. And we can, of course, drag and drop our codes. So that's how we can analyze video and audio files. We just drag and drop on the right hand side and then associate our codes. Now, up until now, actually, I've been showing how to associate codes by right clicking on a quotation. But as you may have also noticed, you have the exact same options up here. So you can conduct your coding whatever way you prefer, whether it's clicking the buttons up here or right clicking. And often with Atlas TI, there's more than one way to do the same thing. And that's simply to be able to adjust best to everyone's preferences. So if you're working with videos and you also want to analyze the visual aspects of this video, you can easily do this in Atlas TI by capturing a snapshot. So when you click on the snapshot button, Atlas TI will take a screenshot of what is currently on the screen in the video and it saved this as a new image document for us. Now we can open this and we have the image here. So how do we analyze images in Atlas TI? Again, we just have to indicate the segments of the image that we want to save and then associate our codes. So you just have to click, drag and drop. You'll see this rectangle appear and you can easily resize it, move it around. Of course, quotations can be overlapping so you can capture as much detail as you would like. And so that's how we can work with images as well. Now imagine, throughout my analysis here, uh, I have a lot of ideas that are coming up in my head while I'm seeing what the parent, what the family being interviewed is saying. Well, it reminds me of something I read in this article here. And I want to write all these ideas down. Whenever you want to, uh, to write anything down in Atlas TI, you can use a memo. A memo is simply a notebook, a blank space, which we can use to keep note of anything that we would like. We can use memos to keep our research diary, to keep track of everything that we're doing each day. We can use memos to capture our analyses and to already start elaborating our, well, our findings and our discussion on the data. So you create a new memo under home, new entities, new memo. And so I'll give a, we have to give a name here. So since we're talking about the family with children, I'll go ahead and give it that name. I right, can see we have that. And then Atlas TI opens our new blank memo. And from here, we can write our descriptions, analyses, reflections, anything that we would like, really. And so now I can elaborate uh, my thoughts on this interview with the family and the article. But of course, this data here is what inspired this memo. And I want to make sure that I remember that. Well, you can, of course, also associate any of your memos to any quotation as well. So you just open your list of memos in the Explorer panel on the left side. And then here we have the memo. So we just simply need to drag and drop it on top of the quotation. And now that memo is associated as well. So you can even use memos to start elaborating the answers to your different research questions. And then anytime you find anything that supports uh, your, your elaboration of this research question, well, you can associate that memo to the quotation, and you'll always have these supporting empirical evidences associated to, the, to that memo. So memos, memos are also a crucial part of the qualitative analysis process. And of course, you can create as many memos as you would like. And you'll always have that available in Atlas TI. Now, finally, as we're writing in our memo here about these different uh, documents we have open, well, it's great that Atlas TI opens everything in tabs so we can easily navigate through them, but I do find it a bit uh, awkward to have to go flicking between tabs, and I'd rather just have everything open side by side. Well, you can do that by simply clicking on the arrow from the tab here, and then new tab group, and tell Atlas TI where you want it to move it. And so now I have my memo on one side, I can have my data on the other side so I can continue analyzing and writing at the same time. In addition to this, any window in Atlas TI can also be floated if you'd like to have it as a separate window, and it can also be docked, so put back in the main screen. So these are just some of the ways in which you can adjust the interface 
to make it more comfortable for your work. I'm going to go ahead and close everything now. And I'd like to take a look. I'd like to take a step back now. And let's see how we can organize some of this work that we've uh, been doing in our project. So we've seen how we can add our documents and how we can analyze textual data, uh, images, videos, and audio files, how to, uh, how to save our quotations and associate our codes and memos. Now, as we continue creating codes and analyzing the data, at some point, you're probably going to want to take a look at your list of codes and organize it and clean it up a little bit. To do this kind of work, you just need to open the code manager. So every entity in Atlas TI has its own manager that we can see here from the home tab. And let's go ahead and start with the code manager here. And so what do we see? We have our full list of codes and some more information on each code. We can see the groundedness, how many quotations are associated to this code. We can also see the density how many links this code has with any other code in the project. We'll see this in more detail when we take a look at networks. We can also see which groups this code belongs to. On the left-hand side, we can also see all the code groups. And when you select a code, Atlas TI will also bold the groups in which this code belongs. So groups are another great way to organize your codes. And if we continue scrolling, we can see who worked on each code, when it was created and when it was modified. So Atlas TI also keeps track of each person's username. And in this way, it's also a great tool for teamwork. Down below, we can see a comment space. Every single entity in Atlas TI has its own comment space. And you can think of this as a sort of a sticky note that's always going to be together with this object. So when it comes to working with the codes, you can take advantage of the comment space to write out the operational definition of that code. So to say, what exactly does this code mean? And when should I apply it to a quotation? And so that's the comment space. And you can easily edit that just by clicking down here and then continue writing. <laughs> so we see here that we can also create groups. And this is indeed a great way to organize your list of codes. To create any group, you just need to select the codes you want to group together and then drag and drop them to the left-hand side. And then, for example, say these are my inductive codes or my deductive codes. <laughs> and here we have it. You can group your codes according to the different categories or emerging themes. And any single code can belong to as many groups as we would like. And you can continue adding codes to any of the groups just by dragging and dropping them. Another way in which you can organize your list of codes is by giving your codes a color. You just click on the code and up here you can change the color. So this is also a nice way to keep track of everything, especially as you may want to color all of the codes in a group together. And finally, uh, a third way in which we can organize our list of codes is by using prefixes. So as we can see here, we've already renamed our codes and added these prefixes to show that this is essentially a subcode of this overarching code about definitions of happiness and the different kinds of definitions of happiness. So prefixes are a great way to organize your codes because Atlas TI is always going to show the list of codes in alphabetical order. And so by putting prefixes, we'll make sure that all of the related codes are appearing together in the list. And any editing or changes that we do here will also show up in our Project Explorer panel. So we have them ordered and with the prefixes, we have everything neatly put together and the colors to help us remember which groups, uh, which codes belong in the same group. So those are some of the ways that we can organize the list of codes, write our comments to get those operational definitions. And since we've done this with all our codes in this project, we can also now quickly and easily export our full code book. So imagine now I'm at the point where I'm uh, preparing my, my final paper and I need to have my full list of codes and all of the definitions included. So I'm going to export this code book. And you have the option here to export your codes or any of your data 
and you can either export it to a report, so a text document, or to an Excel file. So let's see here. If we click on Export to Excel, Atlas TI now gives us the, the option to select what information we want included in this report. So you can just check as much or as little information as you would like here, and then let's go ahead and export it. And now Atlas TI has put everything together in an Excel. Although I see that I actually had only one code selected. So let's just select all items here. And there we have it. We can see the color, the code name, its definition, groundedness and density, and what groups it belongs to. And so that's just one example of how we can export our data in Atlas TI. But using these options, you can also already export all of the quotations of your project. So if we wanted to see all of the quotations related to children and happiness we have here, well, we just select quotations in their full content. We can also see any other codes or memos that have also been associated to the quotations. So you can really go into as much detail as you would like here. And again, LSTI will compile all of this into one single report for you. So you can see here the name, what kind of report it is, and here we have it. We see the code and when it was created, and then that it has four quotations associated. So this is a video quotation here, and it's showing us where exactly in the video it is. We can see there was other codes associated, as well as a memo. Here we have the content of a quotation from a different language, but it's also great to show that with Atlas TI, it does permit any language or character set, so even if that's right to left or, or non-Western languages, you can, of course, import that data and also analyze it in Atlas TI. Although I see now that it's not the best example, since we don't have any quotations we can read here, but well, we can see how we can export the report, and then we can save this report as a PDF or Word file, and then later, when I'm writing up on my findings about children and happiness, well, I can just refer to this report. I don't have to go back into Atlas TI and open all my documents. We can have it all easily and quickly put together for us. So that's an overview of the code manager. And the great news is, is that all of the managers in Atlas TI have the exact same interface in practice. So if we know how to use one, we'll know how to use all of them. I've just opened the document manager here just to show this. So from this manager, we have all of our documents. We see a preview. Again, we see that comment space. So when it comes to working with documents, we recommend to use the comment space to give more contextual information. For example, what kind of data it is or where the interview was conducted. If it's an article or a secondary source of information, you can use the comment space to put the full reference of that article. So you'll always know exactly where this document came from. And then in the end, when I want to create my bibliography, I can easily export my report just to have all the comments of my documents, and then I have all my references. We can group documents as well, same thing, just by selecting the documents and dragging and dropping them on the left-hand side. And so, as we see, it's the same practice as we saw with the code manager. So that's about the different managers in Atlas TI. Now let's take a look at how we can visualize our findings and our data. How can we create a network? I'm going to create a new network. So under Home, New Entities, New Network. And in this network, I want to take a look at the different definitions of happiness that we've been finding here. So we enter the name, and Atlas TI opens up the blank network for us. Now, any object in Atlas TI can be visualized in a network. To add anything to the network here, we just have to drag and drop them. So I'm going to start by working with the codes since that's what I'm interested in here, are the different definitions of happiness. So I just drag and drop them in. And now remember, as I said before, these codes are essentially subcodes of this code. And I want to show that relationship, that hierarchy. Well, to link any two codes together, you simply select the code, and then from the little red circle that appears in the corner, click drag and drop on top of the quotation you want to associate it to. When you let go, Atlas TI gives you the possibility to name this relation. So, 
definition of happiness about fulfillment is a definition of happiness. So you just click from the circle and drag and drop onto the quotation. Now Atlas TI provides this uh, list of relation names by default as suggestions, and you can of course use them, but you can also of course create any relation name that you would like so that you can best describe the relationships between your codes and create this semantic network that we have here now. Now we can also visualize even more information in this network. So we see the code names, but if we go under the View tab of the network tools, we also have some more options here. We can directly see the comments of the codes, so we can already see straight in the network what the definition of each of these codes is. We can also show the frequencies of all of the codes, so we can see the groundedness and density of each code, how many quotations are associated, and how many links this code has to other codes in the project. So for example, here I can see that the density hasn't refreshed, so I'm just going to open it again. And we have the frequencies here. And so now we see that we have a density of three because this code has three links to other codes in this project. And so taking a look here, about uh, happiness being subjective, I can see that I have eight quotations associated, but I don't quite remember what uh, what the data said about this and what was this what was what were these eight quotations here? And I'd like to see them. Well, we can easily import our quotations by just right clicking on the code, go to import neighbors, and a neighbor refers to simply any other object that's been associated to this one. And as I said, I'm interested in the quotations. And so now Atlas TI has imported all of the quotations that have been associated to this code. And we can easily now move them around. And we can see if any quotation has been linked to another code in the network. Atlas TI, of course, remembers all that. And great. But right now, Atlas TI is just showing the names of the quotations. And that's not very helpful for me. I'd like to see the full content. Well, we just select Preview. And there we have it. We can see our image quotations, we can read our text quotations, and we can continue to create links from here. We can link quotations to quotations to describe the relation between them. So what we're doing here is creating hyperlinks. And so if you're conducting a discourse analysis, for example, this is also a great way to analyze the data. Now that we've imported all these quotations, my network is a bit of a mess, and I like to clean it up. If we go back to the Network tab, you'll see that Atlas TI-8 offers a variety of automatic layout options that we can take advantage of. So you can just select the one that best describes your data, and there we have it. Now, of course, we can also export this network as an image or a PDF file, um, JPEG and PNG, all the main formats. And then we can include this network in our final report or our presentation. And it's a powerful way to represent our findings or to summarize what came from this project. Perhaps we want to elaborate a theoretical framework and we can do that using the networks. So networks are absolutely open and flexible. And remember, you can add any of your objects into this network. And of course, you can create as many networks as you would like. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the different analysis tools that we can use with Atlas TI. So we already saw that we can create word clouds and word lists. And let's take a look at some other analysis tools that can help us interrogate our data even more. So under the Analyze tab here, we have the different tools. And let's start with the Code Document table. So with this tool, we can examine how many times any code occurs in any document. We can work with our individual codes or directly work with the groups of codes. And we have the same with our documents, with the individual ones or the groups. So another great aspect of the groups in Atlas TI is we can use them now to filter our analysis and to compare and contrast between our groups. For example, I want to now take a look at 
I want to compare the responses of my female and male participants. So instead of selecting the individual documents here where I have all my participant data, I'm just going to select their group because I already have them all grouped together. And in particular, I want to see, I want to compare what they said about the positive effects of parenting and the negative effects. So I'm just going to select the individual codes in this case to see it in a bit more detail. And here we have the table now. Just so that we can see it better, I'm actually going to flip the order so we have the codes as rows. And let's auto-size the columns so we can read the columns here. And let's take a look. The table is showing us that this code occurs twice in the documents in this group. And it occurs zero times in any of the documents in this group. And so the code document table gives us a nice global overview of where in our project the different concepts are coming up. And now we can easily compare and contrast. For example, how interesting that females talked about having less fun while it seems that males, um, the male participants were much more preoccupied with the loss of freedom that children bring. And so this is an interesting comparison that I could now open a memo and write my reflection in there. And if you want to save this table, you can of course export it to an Excel file. We have some different options here. And so then from there, you can continue to, to conduct quantitative analyses or create a graphic to visually represent this finding. And then of course, also include that in your final report or presentation. So that's the code document table seeing how many times our codes occur in our different documents. Now let's take a look at the code co-occurrence table. Now what does co-occurrence refer to? Well, this simply means the coexistence of any two codes on the same piece of data, on the same quotation. And so again, we're going to create a table here, but in this case, we're going to cross codes with codes and examine if they have any co-occurrences. They're occurring on the same quotations. So we just select the codes. And here we have it. So what it's showing us here is that this code co-occurs four times with this code. If we click on the cell, down below Atlas TI will show a list, the list of quotations in which these codes are co-occurring. And remember, Atlas TI always keeps you close to the data. If you double click on any of these quotations, it'll take you back to that quotation. Here we have it in its full context. So you can always easily revise any of your quotations. So we have our co-occurrence table here, but how could we interpret this result? Well, if we take a look at the highest co-occurrence, for example. So there's a relatively high co-occurrence here between the code of the positive effect of experience personal growth, along with the negative effect of having more worries and stress and responsibilities. Now, it's interesting that these two codes have such a high co-occurrence since they seem to be opposite things. One is a negative effect while the other is a positive effect. Yet in 13 instances, these two codes were put on the same quotation. Now, why would this be? Well, perhaps in order to experience personal growth, one needs to undergo more worries and stress and responsibilities. Perhaps there's some relation between these two concepts, some underlying explanation for why they're co-occurring so frequently. Now, this is, of course, just one example of how we could interpret this. And from here, I would open a memo and write out my reflections. We can also, of course, export this table as well to Excel, to save it, or create a graphic. But it's just to say that the co-occurrence table is a great way to draw our attention to these possibly emerging relations throughout our project. Or as we like to say, the co-occurrence table offers a space for serendipity, for something unexpected to come up. Now finally, let's take a look at the query tool. With the query tool, what we're going to do is tell Atlas TI to bring us quotations based on whatever query that we enter. And so we can have as simple or as complex queries as we would like here. We have our individual codes and our groups up here. And so now if I want to see all the quotations associated to this code, well, I can just double click it to load it into the query space. 
And below, Atlas TI shows me the quotations associated to this code. So this is a relatively straightforward query. We just told Atlas TI, give me the quotations of this one code. But the great thing about the query tool is that we can also make combinations of codes to see which quotations come up. We can even ask our research questions and see what answers come up based on the query here. So for example, I'm interested in the relation between happiness and children. Do children increase, decrease, or don't affect happiness? So I'm going to select this code group here I have that includes all the codes related to the relation between happiness and children. But in particular, I want to see what families with children said about this. So I want to see the quotations from these codes. And I'm going to select the operator up here. They come from families that have children. And so now, down below, Atlas TI shows only the quotations that have been coded with this code and any code from this group, so the AND operator. And we can see, well, we can easily see what this uh, operator means by the nice visual Venn diagrams. And remember, as always, by hovering your mouse over the button, Atlas TI will explain what exactly that one does. So we have a series of different operators up here that you can take advantage of to examine your data. And so you can create your queries and find the results. If you want to focus on a specific set of documents, you can also edit the scope of this query. So if we just click here, now we have the exact same practice and function, but with our documents. So we can select an individual document, we can combine them using the different set operators again. And so for example, if I only want to see the comments of readers, I'm going to double click it to load it into the scope space. And now over here in the final term of the scope, Atlas TI is showing only the quotations that have been associated with both of these and that come from this group of documents. So you can really get uh, your analysis as specific as you want or as focused as you would like. And then if you'd like to save this result, as we can see again with our report button here, we can create an output. If we click on the drop down arrow, Atlas TI also offers some uh, automatic options or some kind of quick access options. So we can just click here and it'll already put together the full content of each quotation and all of its comments. And this is just an alternative to manually selecting what info you want in the report. And here we have it, the name of the project, what kind of report this is, and our quotations. So the results of this query. And with that, we've seen a quick global overview of Atlas TI-8 for Windows. We've seen how we can add our data and then analyze text, images, video, audio by simply selecting and saving our quotations and associating our codes and memos. We took a look at how we can create networks and draw relations across all of our findings, and also how we can use the different analysis tools to, to interrogate our data in even more depth. Now, although we, haven't, we don't have time today to go into detail on the other types of data that we can import in Atlas TI, I would just like to point out that under the Import and Export tab, you can also directly import Twitter data. So if you want to see tweets, you can, if you work with Evernote, you can also directly import your Evernote files here. If you work with any bibliographic reference manager, such as EndNote, Mendeley, Zotero, and so on, you can also import your articles directly into Atlas TI, and it'll automatically organize them for you, and so it'll also help you with your literature review. If you're conducting a survey with open-ended questions and you want to analyze all the responses, whether that's 30 participants or 30,000, you can import all of that survey data with just one click here, and then Atlas TI will automatically group your participants according to whatever variables you want. In this project, we did the same thing here and had them grouped according to education, gender, children, and so on. Atlas TI will also pre-code all of the participant responses to just help you with your analysis. And the same goes with importing tweets. It'll automatically group and pre-code the tweets to help kickstart the work for you. 
You can also import a list of codes if you and your team have already created your list of codes and you want to work with those. And you can export your list of codes. So if I want to now export all the codes here to pass them to my team member, I can easily do that. And you can also export the entire Atlas TI project to SPSS. So if you're conducting mixed methods research, for example, you can have all of this, uh, the whole project, put into an SPSS format and then continue analyzing it from there. Now, finally, under the Tools and Support tab, you'll find some additional useful links that you may like to explore where you can find more information or help. And you can also connect with us on social media. In particular, I would like to emphasize uh, on our YouTube channel, you can find all of our video tutorials. So you can find, you'll find a video tutorial on each aspect that we've seen today. And as well, you can see video tutorials on working with Twitter data or bibliographic references. And you can always find more information there. But of course, if you have any other questions or doubts at any point, whether it's later today or next week or next month, please always feel free to count on our support. And just send us an email or give us a call and we'll be happy to help. And uh, I would just like to remind everyone that uh, remember you can count on that 10% discount coupon if you do decide to purchase Atlas TI. And as well, if you would like to uh, continue learning about Atlas TI with your group of peers or researchers or students, if you would like to also present the software in your class, you can request one of those free on-demand group demo webinars and we'll be more than happy to prepare a personalized presentation for you and your group.